Hey guys, welcome back to the farm. Hey, wet, rainy weather here in Michigan. Moving in pretty good. We're pretty much on cruise control. We've got all the crops in, most of the equipment's cleaned up, put away, serviced. Last couple weeks been pretty tough here on the farm. Uh, we lost our, the farm's oldest son, my grandfather's oldest son, my oldest uncle, my dad's oldest brother, Uncle Jack who was born and raised on this farm in that house up there where I was raised, eight kids. Dad and mom raised five of us in that house. Um, I wanna tell you a little bit about, about my Uncle Jack. He, uh, guy was quite the, quite the man. He was a Vietnam vet, Purple Heart recipient. Was over in Vietnam in 64, 65 when it was, from what I hear, pretty, intense combat but you know when things kill tragedies happen deaths in the family you you got to find that silver lining and i've really gotten to know my cousins they're a little bit older than i am and hanging out with them going to dinner with them talking with them well my cousin steve which would be uncle jack's son he went through some of his dad's stuff and he went and found his military uniform with the Purple Heart on it and some things in a footlocker that he had in Vietnam. Well, he ended up finding some pictures of this farm from 64 and 65 where when I show you these pictures, I'm going to share them with you and try to show you the landscape of this. When Grandpa and Grandma were building this place up, there was nothing. None of these buildings were here. Uh, he shared them with me, gave them to me. My, own, my cousin said, I got something that you're going to really appreciate, and I do. This, these are the, this is a decade of pictures that, that I've been missing on this farm. I've got 70s, 80s, 90s, 60s. There just wasn't any. Some from the 50s. I got pictures of my grandma and grandpa. 40s when my grandpa was in World War II. So the first picture I'm going to get out of my pocket here, and there's a little stack of them, is October of 1964. You know, Grandma was sending these to my uncle when he was over in war to help. Probably he's missing home pretty good, help him uh, keep him up to date what was going on in the farm because Grandpa was really starting to get this place up to snuff. October 64, and here's the foundation right here of the cement pad. Grandpa put a corn crib here, built it himself. My dad said with uh, telephone poles next picture we would have been sitting right over here dad grandpa got a corn picker and there's a building here that building that you see that was that was taken out dad dad took that out when he put the circle driving i think in 02 so back in 64 there was a building and a corn crib and there's another shot of that corn crib full of corn and then from this angle, it's getting filled with an elevator. There's a hip roof barn right there, just the peak of it you can see. And we took that down in 08, and we added on with that free saw holding area. Next picture, we've got to walk all the way around back here. Yeah, Dad put these heifer barns on, calf barn, heifer barns, 98, 01, 05 machine shed that was an original machine shed put up in 89 and then another barn back there then there are all these this next picture i'm going to show you is <laughs> i'm going to get on the right angle of it where but where grandma took it you know it just it, it just amazes me i love this this type of history the fact that grandma was out here on this exact same spot grounds taking pictures to send to her son overseas and these tractors or these pictures made it back safe and sound mint condition you know when i was in the service in 2000 my mom when i went overseas she sent me pictures of this of the farm too i think it's just a farm mother farm mom type deal you know none of these barns are here but i will show you a picture of when grandpa first poured this silo he did it in 64. I want to get in the angle of where Grandma took the picture. It's quite the sight. 
Well, here it is. Uh, freshly poured silo. Freestall barn trusses are up. And there's nothing, there's nothing else around. There's not even a roof on this silo. Let's see if she's got, she wrote on the back of all these in her cursive handwriting. You can't tell much by this, but they just started the barn. So I'm out in this pasture field and the wind's picking up. I hope you can hear me. I hope the lens is staying water free. The next picture is that one silo grandma was about out here. Now that's not the barn you're seeing. The barn that you can see in this picture is on the other side of that barn. The barn was finished and uh, there was a couple silos next to the milking parlor. Those were since taken down. I got another close-up picture of them here in a second when we're done out here. They took them down and expanded the parlor but look at this shot. I mean there's there's four more silos on there and a longer freestall feeder barn but that original freestall barn was put up let's see October of 65 and, and, and those those freestall barns with that galvanized steel there's a lot of them around in this area I always wonder when they were built and 65 is when grandpa put ours up and I've got one more photo out here that just is an amazing photo now, mind you, there's nothing in this direction but a field. You know, there's two barns stacked on top of each other here. This next photo was this first silo put up, 65. They got it done. They got the barn done. And that's Dad on this tractor. Looks like a farm all with a gal wagon. Looks like in excellent condition. Filling the silo, sitting on the tractor, running the blower. Now, on the back of this picture, it says... Dad's new wagons and Jeff unloading. Jeff is my dad. That picture's from 65. Dad was born in 54. That's an 11 year old boy, my dad, filling the silo. Um, maybe you can tell me if you remember them Gale wagons. Uh, I don't know if that's brand new, but Grandma put on there. Dad, her, you know, Grandpa's new wagons. But, but the bigger thing I. That I always say, when I seen this picture, I was astonished. My dad's 11 years old, Phil silo. You know how dangerous that is? He's very good at staying safe. But uh, I guarantee it wasn't something like this. Grandpa probably said, hey, get on that tractor. Watch the blower. Watch the wagon. Keep your arms back. And he did. Luckily. I know a lot of guys got hurt back in them days. But dad, 11 years old. And, and a little little caveat here. Can we just say that the right the right guy got the farm? My dad. It's amazing. <laughs> it shows what he was doing at 11. You can imagine what he was doing at 15 and 16. Making our way over to the front of the parlor. This is when. This was the year they put the parlor in and put a bulk tank in. I got a picture where they put a lean to on the front of the barn and. Uh, Dad standing out front of that. So I'm in the position of this next picture. Now we since a few years back put a bigger milk house on. You see that big building there. Put bigger tanks in because the milk haulers didn't only want to come every other day. But there's that barn. And dad says Jeff's standing in front of the new milk house. So you just put a simple lean-to. We built that over it and uh expanded since then, but that was that's the spot. And as we come in the milk house, this is what it looks like now. Two tanks. And here's a picture from June of 66, that flat top tank they had tucked right in this corner. And I'm sure that's some of the original cement that it was sitting on. We've since had to do some renovation, but that's it. They put a, the, the milk tank in. And moving into the parlors, this is when this went in. And I always wondered when this parlor went in. And those of you guys that haven't followed this channel for very long, we still use this parlor. This was an original four milk surge parlor, four stall. Uh, on the other side of this wall, I'll show you in a, in a few minutes. That was where they milked, stanchion barn. 
I've got a picture of it where they renovated it. They they poured this back wall with cement block, or they you know they laid a block wall, and this went to the four. Here is where it stopped. This line. It was four stalls. Eighty five. We put two more in, and then like in 04, we put a, the additional two more. So there's eight. But yeah, this so this went in June 1966, brand spanking new. And then this next picture, same month, same year, the cows would come out of here. Now the silos have since been gone, and we put bins here because we feed pellets. They'll fill that big bin with pellets, and they'll auger them in, and we'll feed them. But they come out here, and they walked around. And since they changed it, when we put that addition on, the two more, we put an exit ramp to go right out to the barnyard from here. You pull this rope, and then we got the exact opposite when we put the other one on the second edition. And the advantage of doing that, going out towards the barnyard, opposed to looping around, was we gained calving pens each time we did it. Now going out to this holding area, I wanted to show you. This was where they used to milk. This was a stanchion barn. And then this next picture I'm gonna show you is the exact spot grandma put it. Them original those steps. And look at that black black wall in this where I'm showing you. It's pretty beat up. Well here's this picture in June of 66. Looks brand spanking new. They just laid that block in there. And grandma's got on the back of the picture holding area in the barn where they go in. This is all new. Trying to inform my Uncle Jack over in Vietnam. Joel standing there. My Uncle Joel. That would be my dad's uh, brother. He's a little bit younger than my dad. And here's a picture of the cows standing in here. And they, we still use it. Original holding area. But when we added this addition on, they've got room to come up. This is where they enter. And there's a gate down here. So there's your free stalls. And this was the old, the old hay barn. He, uh, I had my cousins over here. I'll show you a group picture when we're done with this video at the end. Like I said, there's your silver lining. You know, we lost a, a prominent man of the family, but the, the kids, uh, the cousins, and my dad was there. We come together and we bond and we talk about the old times. And, and, and the common denominator is this farm. This is where Uncle Jack was raised. This is where, where it all started for, for all these guys, all these siblings of, of my aunts and uncles. And, and it'll be my kids down the line. But the farm is what, that, that's what ties everything together. Out of the milking parlor, the holding area. I've got three more pictures and these are from the year later. Grandma's got on here March 27th, 1966. And where I'm standing, I'm trying to get it, get you the right angle, but there's no silo in this next picture, but it's facing where that freestall barn, see, we, we tie it on top of it. That freestall barn is there, and the hip roof barn is next to it, the old hay barn. And we tore that down. Um, this was the loading area. And if you look, it hasn't changed much, except now we've got it blocked in there. But... On this, on this, in this picture is a Ford tractor with a old Ford tractor with a front end loader. And funny thing is, back of this picture it says Jeff's on the tractor. My dad, 66, 12 years old. Dad loading a manure spreader, hauling out manure. And to this day on the farm, my brothers and I and dad are still here. Dad's 70. Dad still pull, backs in right there, and I load him up with manure. Um, what is that? 60 years later? Or, yeah, 58 years later. Another picture from the same time, 66. One silo. There it is. Cement silo. And look in this picture. Looks brand spanking new. That barn's there. That barn's brand new. That barn was built a year before that. And this bunk is still here, but if you look through the picture, it looks like it stops all the way up here in line with this barn. 
and that was what you had you had one bunk and it had a a small roof over it. if you look in this picture everything looks brand spanking new grandpa had that set up and on the back of this picture that's my uncle joel standing at the end of this bunk he would be roughly standing right here 1966 looking around guys and seeing these pictures there's it's just that's been added on to twice there's their water troughs then that got connected and a lot of changing a lot of history then one last picture i'm showing you hope you'd enjoyed this guys this is more of a family video family history sigma dairy farm ah uh, remember my uncle and showing off these great pictures that made it to vietnam and back we're standing where this picture is taken there's this barn coming across now there's no lean twos there at the time the block barn see the block right here that's the block you're seeing in this picture and the hip roof barn was here and there was a tunnel and we still back in through here to haul manure that was still the same concept there was a manger on that barn there on the right we used to kick hay down that's how they get their hay and right through there dad's loading up that spreader that cow had too much to drink it looks like how we doing out here girls so guys it's the holiday time i know thanksgiving's coming up quick on us this month just flew by I wanted to share them pictures and uh, dedicate this video to my Uncle Jack, uh, grandpa's oldest son. You know, there's 20, 20, 21 years between my grandpa and my oldest uncle. You know, whereas my kids, my grant and I, there's 40 years. But grandpa had eight kids. He's got, he had kids at 40 also. So it's amazing what, what he did and, and, and how, how he raised his kids and how everything turned out. But I'm sure thankful to be a part of this farm and I was thankful to reconnect with my cousins, get these pictures and be able to tell the story of Sigler Dairy Farm and legacy that we've got here. We're very lucky. And you know, ever since losing mom, going on five years now, anytime I hear of a, someone dying close, close to us or even just anybody I know dying, even if I wasn't that close with them, it, it, it affects you. You know, losing her really put a put the brakes on us. It really was a punch to the gut. It, it got us. Um, four and a half years later, we're still kicking. We're we're coming out of it. We bonded together. It wasn't easy. That woman did so much. She was. That was your guys. You know, that was her generation. She did so much. But we're not going to let her down we're going to keep it going so here's a couple pictures of grandma and grandpa and my uncle jack in his uniform take care guys see you next video god bless